السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ سعیدی وعلیکم السلام سعیدی نا دا یو ایکسپلین ٹو اس دی ایگزسٹنس اف پورٹلز ہاؤ کین وی بی پورٹل ٹو دا ہارٹ اف پروفیٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم بائی انڈرسٹینڈنگ دا ریالٹی دین وی انڈرسٹینڈ دیٹ دیز ایسوسیشنز آر ڈیزائنڈ ایز پورٹلز that the minute you enter into their association you have to distinguish and differentiate yourself from your physicality and the reality of your soul. Your physicality thinks it's sitting there and probably doesn't know why it's sitting there. But at the same time your soul is free in the association and the two of you are not the same. As soon as it enters into this association, the madad of the shaykhs and the authorized representatives, their association is not from here, their association is from a light and a circle above us from these masters. As soon as the associations begin, their lights are emanating. As a result of their lights from Budala, Nujab, Nuqab, Awtadul, Akhyar, Jinni wa Malaika, seven categories of saintly souls. That energy from their presence immediately creates a portal in which all the souls of the attendees are entered into that dimension and into that association. And the physical body doesn't even know what's transpiring. The one who's been trained feels it, they feel an energy, they feel a vibration. If they've been trained in their seeing and spiritual seeing, they may see the association, they may feel and witness the energies that are taking place. That is what the circles of zikr were described by Prophet described them as portals. If you see a halaqa of zikr, know that that is a circle from paradise, it was a portal and that that portal is encompassed by angels all the way to Arsh rahman is the hadith. That this is a circle of paradise and the angels circumambulate around that circle all the way to the throne of Allah Sending blessings and lifting difficulties, there was a portal. Was a portal. So as soon as they sit in that association or they turn the video on at home Their home becomes that portal. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan, there's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. Because the home becomes the circle of paradise, as soon as they turn it on, The tajalli of these masters come, the tajalli of the angels come because they're listening for the dhikr and immediately that becomes a portal under Arsh Rahman and all their soul is moving in that reality. What do you think is transpiring to your soul and how long is that happening? You could be living lifetimes in that circle and you don't even know it, you don't know what time and what has transpired in that reality and in that portal of light you have no idea what has happened to you, what dress was given to you, what blessings were, were sent upon you. Prophet went for Isra'i wa Maraj that the story sounds like it was lifetimes went to this paradise, went to, you think it happened in five seconds? No, Allah described an entire tour of paradises. Then all of those were finished went into the tour of the Divinely Presence, went to Siratul Muntaha, went to every aspect of paradise, it was not five minutes. When you read the hadith it's making it sound like it was fast, it was a lifetime that never ends. 
And then Sayyidina Aisha salam describes his body came back and his face was still warm. Mm -hmm. But that never ended, that miraj never ends, that reality and the dress never end. And the one who enters into that portal is not going into uh, emptiness, they're going into Allah's rahmah and mercy. What type of lights dress them, bless them and eternally dress them and as a result the physicality is receiving all of these rewards, all of these blessings. It doesn't know how it became blessed, it has no idea how it became blessed, it just knows it is blessed because the soul is now moving into these oceans and to these realities. So no doubt, no doubt the, the circles, the khatams, the presence and the associations, everything is about a portal to paradise. And that's why it's asked in last days, all these people who claim to love Allah, why they don't come to the circles and the portals of paradise? If it's Allah you love, why you're not looking for a, a circle of paradise? Well, who promised you that if you prayed you had a circle of paradise? But Allah was given a gift to Prophet if you see the halaqahs of zikr, see it, they're a circle from paradise, a portal to paradise. So then the circles, the zikrs, the khatams, the salawats is build your relationship and your love with Prophet And Prophet described, if you make one salawat upon me, I will come like a portal now and begin to dress you with ten salawats. So the one whom sits and makes their salawats and their durood, what's happening for them? They're in the presence of the most powerful portal which is the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad And as a result when they want that portal to open, its blessings to open then it's their good deeds. They go out, they live a life of service, they do all of these good deeds, all these good actions, why? so that they can get the nazar. The nazar means that the gaze of the soul is looking upon you. When that gaze comes it's an entire protection. The one whom is under the gaze of the All Merciful then this is a, a gaze and a light of immense power and immense protection inshaAllah. Allah dress us with His blessings and, and dress us with His realities inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Uh Does Sayyidina Khidr Salam travel through portals and what's the reality of Sayyidina Khidr being present throughout time? That's a, another good example. The Sayyidina Abbas Qadr Salam is a walking portal. And Allah has given to his reality that he's in the shajara of Naqshbandiyat al-Aliyah, he's in the chain for an immense barakah and blessings of the chain. He's here to bless the chain of Naqshbandiyat al-Aliyah. Because he's a shaykh in the tariqah then his nazar is continuously upon the tariqah students. And when they try to meditate and contemplate, he's a great support to facilitate that madad. That's why when we say that when you want to meditate, you want to make your madad that recite the madad, recite the recitation in the names of these holy shaykhs because they come with an immense power. Anybody who wants to have that energy of that portal in their home, recite the madad, continuously recite the madad in your home calling the chain of Naqshbandiyat al-Aliyah. And then Mawlana Sayyidina Abbas Khidr salam then has an important role in an interdimensional connection. connection. Means the one whom is on earth and trying to kin connect into the realities of barzakh then he plays that role to facilitate their connection and to facilitate the conveyance of knowledges reaching towards the Divinely knowledges. And that's why Allah gave that example of Sayyidina Khidr coming up in Surah Al-Kahf. The reality of Surah Al-Kahf why it was so difficult for Sayyidina Musa is because he was not seen. 
Sayyidina Khidr was not seen. So all of the transpiring understanding of Sayyidina Musa and meeting with Sayyidina Khidr and then passing. How you could pass if you saw somebody standing there? He's unseen and the only way to understand that Sayyidina Khidr was there that there were signs of the revival and that he had the power to revive the dead. So when Yeshua put his fish and they passed, he said, what happened to our lunch? Oh I forgot I put the fish down to prepare for lunch and it was ajeeb. The fish came to life and jumped into the river. So his meeting with the unseen shaykh he realized that was the sign I was looking for, the one who can bring the dead to life, let's retrace our tracks. And the whole event with Sayyidina Khidr was unseen by anyone and that's why Nabi Musa had a difficult time. Everything that was happening nobody could see Sayyidina Khidr And Sayyidina Khidr is also of that reality now that if the student has good character and that they have their meditation and sincerity, they should be able to connect with the reality of Sayyidina Abbas Khidr and that his purpose is to facilitate the connection into that realm and facilitate the conveyance of knowledge. So it's a great portal under the Muhammadan haqqaiqs inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam uh, Can you please explain uh, Jabal Kaf? Where, where is it located and function? InshaAllah Jabal Kaf is a mountain of, of, of power and that a reality from the reality of the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad that the power of Qur'an, the power of all these realities that are being talked about, that mountain of reality and the most powerful cave is the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad so all of what's being taught now of this cave and the conveyance and manifestation is from the reality of Jabal Kaf. That's why it's not talked about and not understood. That those whom are under the dominion of that reality, they are the ones conveying these knowledges. That the heart of Prophet is the most powerful portal. And that the connection and this adherence to the connection is that you're a- asking to enter into the reality of the qalb. Qaf, Lam, Ba. So you're trying to reach towards the qul which is immense power, Qaf, Jabal Qaf, Lam, Ba. So that's why then the tariqah is teaching you come to the people of the Bab. They hold the secret of entering into Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. So the knowledges, the realities they're teaching you, these are the awliya of the Bab. So not all awliya have that secret. The ones whom do in conveying that teaching, they're teaching you from the knowledge of the Bab that come to the gatekeeper of this Bab. Which was who? Um, Ali Babahu, the Zulfiqar and the teachings we gave of La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah is the Zulfiqar, is the sword. The kalima is the sword of Prophet and he gave the Zulfiqar to Imam Ali because that was the Naming of, you're my ulul bab, you're the one who will stand guard to this spiritual gate and will sanctify and purify so that nobody can enter into this without you've credentialed them. So wilayat and sainthood must be signed by the gatekeeper. 
which is Imam Ali salam. on our chest. So means that that gatekeeper salam must see all the characteristics that the other companions have taught, purified, corrected you. You have the love because Naqshbandiya is the love of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq and the khuluq of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq. Did you love Prophet more than you loved yourself? Because anytime we mention Imam Ali every other crazy person starts saying, well you're not mentioning Sahabi. Oh we are, tariqah is based on that. You have no claim to Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq if you don't act like Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq. That his love for Prophet was more than he loved himself. He had given everything for that reality. And so what did you leave for your family? La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah So you reach there before you worry about who mentions the Sahabi or not. You have to take from their character. Once you took from their character then they'll present you to Imam Ali salam who will sit with the Zulfiqar and coming after your head. So now you're ready to enter into this gate? So yeah, no head, no more head. You're not a person anymore that you hear the knowledge and then five minutes in your car you're questioning everything that was said. No you have a very strong head. When you reach a point where he cut your head off you just, Samina wa ta'ana, I heard it and it's deep into my heart. I heard it and it's deep into my heart because they cut the head from that person. The person is no longer taking realities and trying to bring it here into here. It's just straight going into the heart, into the heart, into the heart. And if it's into the heart they act upon the reality. They don't analyze, they don't think, oh well, I will, I won't. They act upon these realities and their khuluq and the character is a manifestation and a continuous manifestation. That's what we talked about the power of manifestation. When you believe and you have certainty in your belief, anything you begin to do it begins to manifest. This that'll happen, this that'll happen, this that'll happen. Why? Because of the power of faith. That Allah gave a faith and a yaqeen to that servant and that everything begins to happen. So that has an immense power. So Jabal Qaf is the, the reality of these ashaqeen that they're in the love and in the ocean of Sayyidina Muhammad They entered into the bab and the realities of these knowledges and these uloom and they became subservient to the lamb. That their whole life was to listen to the lamb, listen to the guidance and the isharats of Prophet so that they could reach to the immense power of Qaf of Allah's qudra. Means these powers that are coming and flowing, it doesn't come to the one whom's not listening. So it means our life was about, that's why it started this whole week with hearing. This hearing opens here. If you don't hear the message, hear the guidance, how is your heart going to open? And imagine the one who doesn't hear the shaykhs and their guidance but they think their eyes are open. No, those are jinn saying something, playing with you. If a jinn come to you, immediately you can see and experience everything, it doesn't mean you reach anything. This teaching is based on hearing opened. You know that you heard, you know that you went through difficulty, you know that what Allah is opening through the faculty of Samina wa ta'ana, I heard and I obeyed all my life. As a result Allah opens sincerity within the heart and that the vision and yaqeen of their heart is based on the purity of their hearing. So it has immense, immense powers and that's why they're teaching from Jabal Qaf, they're teaching the reality. The highest reality is run to the cave of Sayyidina Muhammad Where is the cave of Sayyidina Muhammad What did we teach for Auzu Billahi Min Shaitanir Rajeem?
What did we teach for A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem? Seek refuge in those whom are already in Allah's refuge. When Allah was just saying, say A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem, when I'm going to run under a tree or go to those whom are already in Allah's refuge. This is the easiest thing. Otherwise, where, where are you going to seek? They said, tomorrow shaitan is coming on earth. A'udhu Billah, where are you going to go? You're going to go where they're already protected under Allah's refuge. Means come under the shadow of the shaykh because that protection is already there. That protection is on Sayyidina Muhammad and those whom are under the shade and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad they are casting that shadow onto earth, the same reality. So that we, we should have learned at the Muharram that the gate of all knowledge is, is how well do you understand the A'udhu Billah? A'udhu Billah, seek refuge in His ilahiyat. What Allah has given to the reality and the soul of Prophet we described the other night, vampire movies are teaching you what? Make sure the sun is on you at all times. For if the sun begins to go, the vampire will bite your foot. So these scary movies, these guys out there and he, if the sun is going away and he can see the shade is now coming. And as the shade is coming, the shaitan is in the shade coming closer to him. It's like, I'm gonna eat you to pieces right now. As soon as the last part of that sun vanishes, you're my dinner. Any part of you that is not in the light of Muhammad Rasulullah will be eaten by shaitans. If only half of you has the love then half of you will be eaten and devoured. And that's why Prophet gave to us, love me more than you love yourself because <laughs> yourself going to be in difficulty when these shaitans come. So that's what these movies are teaching. The one who sees these movies understands, SubhanAllah Ya Rabbi. Because everyone say, oh it's Allah but the Ahl Marifah no, yeah but Allah is not coming if Muhammad and Rasulullah is not there. Would Allah show up somewhere and, and Prophet is not there? He, the Prophet didn't deem it worthy for himself to come but Allah showed up? It's the reverse. Prophet has to come, has to be with the servant, love that servant. As a result Allah is looking, you're there, I'm there. Means if he's keeping your company and you're keeping his company, then I'm with you. In the ladina yubayyunaka, yubayyunaka, didn't say, why did Allah didn't say just buy his my hand? Take his hand, my hand on his hand. So Allah didn't say, put your hand in the air and, and just, I'm with you, right? But yubayyunaka. Put your hand on his hand. If his hand is willing to accept your hand, my hand on both your hands, powered. So this is the, this is the shield of the believer. Everybody wants Allah's love. Allah's love will save us from vampires eating us. قُلِينِ كُنْتُمْ تُهِبُونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِي If they followed you and you're happy with them and they're continuously in your shade because they're following you. They're loving you, you'll be with whom you love, فَتَّبِعُونِ يُحِبُّكُمُ Now Allah's light and love is, is encompassing that servant like a sun on them just moving over them. As a result those vampires can't eat that servant, can't approach that servant, can't put a difficulty upon that servant. And then that servant's responsibility is, you want a sunshine like mine? Yeah. Do what we did, have the love that we have, be the service that you can. And as soon as you love Prophet more than you begin to love yourself, that luminous light begins to encompass the servant. And that's the role of the shaykh, keep the presence of the shaykh, keep the teachings of the shaykh, keep the loves of the shaykh. As a result they are a portal for the student. Their love and they bring with their heart and their teachings the presence and the light and the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad 
And that's why Allah describes in Qur'an, فِيكُمْ They are amongst you. Prophet is always amongst the people. His physical presence is in the heart of those who love him. And if they love him they're with Prophet all the time their light is emanating that reality. As a result of that they put a shade upon people from difficulty and illuminate the hearts of people from shayateens coming and approaching to them inshaAllah. <coughs> Very deep subject if people listen to it for a couple of days and keep thinking about it. Try not to go quickly into other things, I want to ask this, I want to ask that, I want to ask this, I want to ask that. But from these teachings to quickly uh, to go deeper into it and think and contemplate that we're seeking to be under that nazar of Prophet and that Allah gave to us 124,000 of these portals. And these ashiqeen whom they have this immense love, they exhibit the fragrance of that reality. And as a result of that keep their company, keep their presence, keep your good character <coughs> so that that light dresses and blesses upon you. It has an immense reality, immense reality. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi as you spoke about the portal of Ashab al-Kahf, mm. can you please uh, speak a little bit about the the portal of uh, Holy Prophet entering the cave with Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq? That's the, the real cave. That was the understanding of the real cave. Ashab al Kaf is a reality or placeholder but when the seal of prophecy enters upon this earth and moves a hijra into the cave that is the real cave of all realities. And that that has an immense secret in that hijra and we talked about that, that when they entered into that cave and took Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq and the importance of what Imam Ali as salam lied in the bed to sacrifice himself for that love. So these are two characteristics the servant has to exhibit. One, are you ready to sacrifice yourself for the love of Prophet If you're not then you're not of Imam Ali's reality. Then you have to copy Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq that you have to leave your dunya and begin your hijra into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad And that becomes the love of the great Siddiq that he took his path to accompany. Are you accompanying Prophet leaving the busy city and moving into the realm of light, Medina Munawwara and as soon as he entered into the cave his conduct of servanthood is what the Naqshbandiya should be exhibiting, that they keep close companionship to Prophet and that the heart has a hole in which shaitan will enter always into their heart and disrupt their whole lives. Until Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq puts his holy qadam and foot upon that hole. So the love for Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq exhibiting and following that holy way until he says that, my qadam that I'm happy with your movement and that your feet are like my feet in truthfulness and in your sincere love for the Rasul I will put my feet upon your feet and you are now inheriting from Qadam as Siddiq, that you are a truthful servant of Allah Then Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq's foot is supporting your foot on that hole so that shaitan is not coming into your heart and disrupting and flipping your faith and flipping your, your character. So that has immense, immense realities. Once the student achieves the Siddiqiyya dress of tariqah in which Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq going to make them like a shining moon that will face the nation and that your face will represent the Muhammadan nation to creation. That's why he's the first of the Khalifas, the face of the moon the teaching us that this is the face of that reality of how much I loved Prophet and love Sayyidina Muhammad is we want to inherit from that Siddiqiyya reality. Then we continuously strive for the, the reality of Ahlul Bayt 
in which live a life in which to sacrifice, sacrifice yourself, sacrifice your time, sacrifice all, all that you have for the sake of this reality. There are some people who don't want to sacrifice anything, not their time, oh it's inconvenient, not, not nothing. And our life is about sacrifice so that we can inherit from these two springs and then that becomes Naqshbandiyatul Aliyya, the Most High in which you're being dressed by the holy companions and the Ahlul Bayt inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, can holograms cause manifestation using the power of sound in the world of light? Okay. Hmm? Can holograms produce what? Manifestations using the power of sound. Can holograms produce manifestations using the power of sound? I have no idea. Yeah. I'm sure they're trying to get at something, I'm not understanding it because the, the, the hologram is going to be something that they're trying to manifest, a three-dimensional conversation. Instead of just hearing me, you'll be manifesting this vibration and that'll have to do with many things that manifest from these vibrations. This goes towards the understanding of our ability to manifest, it should give people more yaqeen. If Sony can take my sound and through light and sound produce an image and that's was from our talks on manifestation that shaitan knows what you're capable of. He's trying to take your power to manifest bad thoughts, bad actions, bad doings. Allah once say, I gave you a very powerful creature, why you don't manifest the good things from the power I gave to you? So that's why then if they bring down the satanic energy and begin to pray and ask for these things to happen, they will manifest the portal. They will manifest these lights, they will manifest openings within their reality if they believe. And shaitan is taking them to manifest towards negativity, why don't you fear it, why don't you fear it? If they begin to fear it they're manifesting their sickness and they are manifesting their attack and they are manifesting their own sickness in their physiology, right? How does fear bring you to be sick? Because you manifesting to lower your own energy and that's what shaitan wants with fear. As soon as you fear something your vibration is dropping and he says, oh I got you good, here we go some more fear, more fear, more fear until panic sets in your vibration is so low you made yourself sick. And they say some people have such a strong ability they have psychosomatic ability, they have so much understanding of something all of a sudden they get a scratch because they're allowing a manifestation to come. So that means this power of manifestation has to be understood and has to be practiced. So you practice it under the guidance of the madad, that's why nothing of meditation is taught by you alone because you're never alone. If you try to sit in a room and just try to hymn by yourself, shaitan will be the first one there because already there around you. That's the Auzu Billah. So as soon as you understood Auzu Billah is that I have to always be away from shaitan so best to call my shaykh and call the Allah call the Prophet call the awliyaullah and then call my shaykh. When I call all these positives I know the shaitan ran. Then I will begin to do my meditation and my practices. So there is never a place where you're alone with your creator until you create that atmosphere. As soon as you recite the madad you're asking Allah asking Prophet calling these buzurg, these huge souls of reality, calling for your shaykh and then you have this immense aura of power all around you and you're manifesting that through your belief and then you're sitting in that energy. So then that becomes now timeless like what we talked about inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam <coughs> Sayyidi, when thoughts come that are dark or negative about others or about ourselves, can you talk about this waswas in context of light and sound? Just bad, make salawats. Anytime shaitan comes 
you don't need to describe shaitan that he's like this, he's hairy, he's dark, he's scary. It's just bad, bad energy is coming, you don't need to worry about anything more than that but what you want to do is combat it. So you start making salawats, make sure that you have wudu, you didn't lose your wudu not for a moment, you try to keep your wudu at all times and then you begin your salawats. When you have your wudu and you're making your salawats this negativity has to move away from you. And then you keep practicing and then you learned also how to do your madad, asking for your shaykh to be present and again feeling that presence and then making your salawat. So all of these energies are based on and these practices are based on this whole understanding. Just do your practices, go to the light and the vampire should move away. When the vampire is coming too close means you entered into the shade and he start biting your toes because your toes are like out into the shade. I mean keep yourself in the light, make the madad keep yourself in wudu and that light should be shining upon you and the stronger and stronger you become, you become a reservoir of their love in which your heart begins to emanate like that and begins to have a sunshine within itself continuously pushing away negativity. So it's continuous process, it's continuous struggle, it's jihad al-akbar, the great, great struggle for humanity is to keep themselves within the light and keep their practices, keep their positivity, keep a, a good character and a good outlook so that they can stay in the light, stay in the light, don't go into the darkness. In the darkness all that awaits is grief and, and horrific energies, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Sayyidi, in yesterday's talk you mentioned about Allah's will and Amr is our future that is unknown to us is already manifested as Amr or still in Allah's will? About you? If you manifest it, it's written. What we're talking about iradatullah, the will of Allah is complete unknown will that Allah kept to Himself. Then there's a will that manifests within the soul of Prophet and that's from Surah Yaseen. So Allah's will that's going to manifest is then given to the heart of Prophet to know. When he commands that, let it be known, kun fayakun, Prophet immediately begins to say it. Whether it's galaxies and universes and creations coming into existence by the command of Prophet from what he heard from Allah so if you manifested then everything has already been written for you. Your life, your death, your rizq, everything, everything has already been manifested in the kitab, you're manifest. And Allah can take a page and rewrite a page at any time, Allah is free to do whatever Allah wants. But your book has been written and it's actually called your DNA, it's everything been written in it. So the du'as, the practices, the, the spirituality, all of these is that Allah has already written it and if there's anything that, that, that is needed to be changed Allah can change it based on the du'as, the character and the example that the servant is setting, Allah can rewrite at any time what Allah wants to rewrite inshaAllah. That's why we always think the highest that Allah has written the best for me, I came short. Allah wrote, have the perfection of faith, the, the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and the best of everything, I'm coming short. And then that's why then they enter into tariqahs, Ya Rabbi I'm weak, I'm weak, let my love for Prophet help me to reach to my rizq, reach to my, my iman, reach to all these realities. And that becomes then the importance of the servant never giving up hope from the goodness of what Allah has written. It's actually a huge sin to give up hope in Allah So believer can never give up hope and to think negative that Allah loves that creation and will always write the best for them. So that our life is about believing, praying and that Allah continuously overwrite any badness I've done and to make it to be a goodness and, 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 and khair inshaAllah. 
Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah On the reality of sound, what are the effects of silent zikr and loud zikr? The trained, there, there's no silence. So there's no silence in this universe, it's just you don't hear it. So everything, you said, bi huwa bi hamdi, everything has a hamd. When the students have progressed and they trained in their muraqaba, because Naqshbandiya was all about muraqaba, Mamna Shah Naqshband was a, was his entire reality and his salam was based on khafi, based on spiritual practices, based on all of these realities and would often leave the zikrs to do khafi and then began to train people in muraqaba and khafi. So this is the immense way of Mawlana Shah Naqshband. When the student has trained in the practices then when they make zikr and breathe it's all energy for them, they breathe the energies that are coming, they breathe the presence of the shaykh. The shaykh is like a power, like a battery or like a sunlight for them that in their breathing and their muraqaba they're being filled and ignited with energy and like, like a fire. When they do their zikr when they're ignited every <coughs> it's, it's a khafi means that it's not making a sound out but it's making an internal zikr within their being. And then they progress even stronger in which they don't even like to move because the movement stops them from their death. They have the ability to stop all movement and begin their practices and they enter a state of death in which they park the physical body and begin to move out with their soul. So that has immense power. Now if you go like that then you came back into your body. If you're going like this and you're, you're trying to leave your body and moving your fingers it's impossible. So they actually enter into a state of death in which they breathe, they can shut down their physicality and they feel themselves coming out with their soul in that reality and in that association, in that muraqaba. So the khafi zikr was to be trained to enter the state of death. When it came out into the lands in which they don't understand Islam and they don't know the Qur'an and they don't know all of these then for the sake of da'wah they said, now recite out loud and repeat after me. So that was an immense power to spread Islam. So the ones who didn't know it when they were going from village to village as soon as they heard the, the loud then they were repeating it loud and reciting along. But it was also to be in continuity with your spiritual practices. They will do the zikr loud for people but you should be training on your muraqaba, your contemplation and your khafi breathing and practices. But now that all stopped and it's just loud zikr so that's something different. But the, the power is in the silence and the khafi and the breathing. So the zikr out loud is for the people to be energized and to receive its teachings but the students should be adhering to their spiritual practices so that to bring the power of the breath and power of all their experiences inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. InshaAllah then food for thought, leave your comments in the videos and, and contemplate the, the portals, the energies and the importance of uh, manifesting and entering into these portals, develop that relationship that uh, how to, to build that portal and that relationship with Prophet is the love of the guide and the shaykh, to keep the companionship, to keep the respect, to keep the attention, how to be under the nazar of Prophet is by the good deeds and love and the good deeds and love that you show towards your guide then you receive the nazar of the shaykh. The nazar of the shaykh draws you into his portal, from his portal is within the portal of Sayyidina Muhammad is within the portal of all his shaykhs already in there. So that's why the Allah disperses the ships upon 
the earth. In Surah Al-Yaseen, wa khalaqna wa hamalna dhuriyatuhum fi fulqul mashqoon wa khalaqna mislihi and we created like them. So there's huge ships that traverse and collecting souls, bringing them into Divine the Presence and then Allah describes, and we created smaller ships because they go into areas where the big ship can't come into dock. So the small ships are going around collecting people, bring them in, then the small ship come back to the big ship and the big ship fulukul mashkun. These are loaded with souls and energies and powers that are dressing upon them. So means that's the whole concept of tariqah is that you find that portal, develop your relationship, be under the nazar with the good deeds and, and good actions and that those bring to the presence and the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad because the tarbiyah and the training they're under the, the khuluq and the character that they train them like Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq then they sweeten them like Imam Ali Salam at that time Prophet is very happy to look upon them. And when Prophet's gaze begin to dress them, bless them and begins to sweeten their reality. As Alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago. Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.